I got the I got I got people pointing at me, telling me we're live. I'm gonna wait to get confirmation that uh, everyone can hear me, and we will get the show started. My, as I say every time, uh, I'm a broken record. This is my favorite part: the, the waiting for someone to say that they can hear me, and and, and the lovely Twitch lag. <clears throat> Hooray! People can hear me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dev Stream number eight for Expeditions Rome. Uh, we are really excited today to be talking about some new stuff. We have some cool things today. We have a we have a giveaway. We're gonna be giving away some some Expeditions Vikings keys. So if you or friends wanted to ever play Expeditions Vikings, now you have a chance. We're gonna be doing some some fun questions for that. We have my my fun my, my fun friend Hans over here. Hans, say hello to everybody. Hello everybody. I'm the fun friend Hans. Hello Brad. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. Um, you're joining us again today. We're gonna be talking about crafting, um, which is a really fun topic. We kind of teased this uh, last stream when we talked about the uh, kind of the equipment system and how equipment works. But now we're going to dive into crafting specifically, which I know a lot of people are interested in. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. And uh, if you haven't read the diary, uh, Dev Diary number eight is up on our site. Uh, it's down below Hans, which if I do my arrow pointing right, that should be right. Uh, Community.expeditionseries.com. Uh, you can find... Look at that. I did get my arrow pointing right. Seeing myself on the on the camera delay, and it worked out okay. So hooray for me. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about crafting and everything. Hans, we, we, we actually just had this fun conversation right before we started about how you answer this very cliche question. But how are you doing today, Hans? <clears throat> well, I answered it in a pretty good way, but I already thought of a new one to answer. I'm doing pretty good, but right now I'm, I'm a bit hot because I have to wear this shit jacket. And that's because I realized when we were doing a little prep that you're wearing a really awesome shirt. I'm like... I could be wearing the same shirt, but you know, it's a it's a bit cliche, and everyone's just showing off the game, and we're already doing that by talking about the stream. So I was like, okay, just tone down a bit, hands, put on a nice color, and we'll we'll take it from there. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I um uh, I I realized too in the prep that I had my uh my maroon shirt on. I was very tempted to go grab the black one, swap it out. But you know what? We'll be uh we'll be twinsies. It's fine. It's all good. Yeah. Can everyone hear? So I can hear Hans just fine on my side. Is everyone hearing Hans? I see some comments that he's quiet. Um, I'm not sure if uh, our lovely producer Nadine in the background has a way to turn him up or if Hans has a way to turn himself up a little bit. We will see if we can get that fixed here. Um, I should be able to. Sorry for that. Let's try this out. See if, if this is any better. Should be 15% more of my voice coming out now. Okay. Yeah. And I think we have a way on uh, on uh, uh, on our 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 platform we're using to do this to also boost you. So hopefully, um, oh, and people are saying that's better, so that's great. So awesome, everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, we have a lot to go over today, and like I said, we're gonna be giving away some some uh, some uh, Viking uh, keys. So I think we have home in the chat. The way it's gonna work, um, we'll do some Viking giveaways uh, throughout the stream. Um, if uh, I select you to win uh, a Vikings key, you are going to private message home 24. He is our lovely uh, community manager for Expeditions Rome, and he will uh, send you a key, and then you can get a chance to play uh, Logic Artist's previous game, Vikings, which uh, there was actually a chat going on in Discord about people liking Vikings versus Doors and, and other things. I actually really enjoyed playing Vikings when I played it, so I uh, hope you have a chance to uh, get into some of our previous stuff. We also have some, um, some small but new uh, footage we're going to be showing today about the crafting system as we walk into it. So... Let's go ahead and dive right into crafting, and uh, just to kind of uh, start off the conversation, it's really hard to talk about the crafting system without slotting it into the greater item economy, because it really does tie into that. So in the diary, I think we discussed kind of three main ways that most RPGs uh, uh, give you to acquire equipment. So maybe you can talk our community through that. What are those, those three ways that you usually find in RPG to acquire equipment? Right, so in role-playing games, it's most commonly that you acquire equipment, um, and specifically equipment, so stuff you can put on your character or characters um, through either looting or either from buying items, and lastly, from crafting. And there are some other systems as well, but those three are the most uh, common ones by far. And so they, they all have a different purpose uh, in game design generally, and... Uh, also multiple purposes, I would say. I say looting is the most common one. Uh, it's 
gives you a huge reason to go out and explore the world. If you have anything hidden in a chest, if you have something hidden inside the hole of a tree somewhere, uh, it feels really great to to stumble upon this and see if it's something that you can either throw in the trash or equip yourself. You have a little story of how you found it, where you found it. Um, it gives you a reason to explore the world. And on top of that, looting um, does mean you pick something out of container and that also uh, equivalates to you picking up items from your slain enemies. Um, and as everyone knows, RPGs are about character power, defeating AM enemies and becoming stronger. So to be able to pick up whatever they had um, just feels good. And then... I mean, here's why I lose the dead bodies of your enemies, right? That's always fun. Exactly. And uh, that, that was a very important thing for Viking. So like that's a, that's a raider. That's a, that's a fighter uh, who does that. Then you have buying stuff out of uh, item vendors. And this is usually something you would do in, in town hops, where you maybe go to the Fletcher to buy some bow and arrows or a quiver or go to the leather worker to to buy specific armors that, that is leather and that has the purpose that you can often like dump your money there and then you'll get some of the items that they have for selection um some games will present you with very specific items uh, at these vendors and then other games they will randomly generate these items just like they they would when you find them in the world um but ultimately it's like Item vendors give you like more characters and more life to the world, while also allowing you to dump your money to buy something random. And then lastly, we have uh, crafting, which is quite different from the two others in the way that you are more, much more in control of what will be, be crafted. I, I do think some games have like a craft something random system, but generally, whenever you go into something which you can uh, relate to more, is that you spend resources to craft a sword or shield whatever specific thing that uh, you have needs for and so yeah. those are kind of <clears> the <throat> ways that you would usually acquire items uh, which you can equip in, in role playing games yeah um uh, alex let me see if i can uh, pronounce uh alexi malakov um that's a really good question uh, alexi asks are crafted things always better than looted ones we're actually going to talk about how crafted uh, items fit into progression a little bit later. So that hopefully at the end of the stream, if we haven't asked your question, please ask it again and we'll, we'll make sure to cover it. But I think you're going to find that answer as we go through. Okay. Also, I love that we have, um, of course, our resident members of the Fosse fan club showing up. Uh, that's, that's always fun. Fosse is, is, is well loved in the, uh, the Rome uh, stream watching community. Um, I, I really still think we should have gotten, I, I am a Fosse fan t-shirts or something because it seems like there's always one popping up. So, yeah, I think it's it's, it's true. And, and I, uh, the the what I think is very interesting about the Expedition series, we did this in Vikings and we're also doing this in Rome again, um, is that we didn't really want to... Um, a lot of these mechanics have a lot of overplay between, like, looting and vendor buying and, um, and uh, you know, crafting. So we actually removed the vendor buying. We only have looting and crafting, both in Vikings, and for those who want to play Vikings, we're going to give away a key here in a second, as well as um, in Rome. And, uh, I mean, what was the thought process of doing Because I know that's that's a big decision to remove vendoring. Well, I think one of the big ones is, is kind of what I talked on a little, little bit, is how the vendor is, is our way for you to get randomized loot very often, uh, or very specific things, and being able to just, like, meet vendor, buy best item in the game, doesn't feel very... Like you actually earned it and uh, maybe it was very pricey but often that's not the most interesting thing of acquiring something you don't feel like you have a connected story to the item very much uh, and then if it's randomized loot then you might as well have went into the world to to get that or killed some npcs to get that which will also get you a much more like personal connection to to whatever items you found um one could argue that item vendors is a great way to to establish more characters and bring more life to a world, which is definitely something we, we do a lot, both in Conquistador, Viking, and Expeditions Realm. Um, but that can also be done in, in a multitude of other ways. So when we were looking strictly on how does the player acquire equipment, we saw that we didn't need like an extra superfluid system uh, in there that we both had to implement and that the player might just like not even bother about because there should be plenty of equipment for you to find in at your enemy's corpses yeah yeah and i think i mean it's it's there's there's uh it's a balancing act because you obviously there's also a, a, a like an economy part of that when it comes to sources of income and sinks for that income and i think um when you have that um kind of vendor approach it's not always a bad thing sometimes grinding up currency and like having that kind of 
carrot in front of you can be a lot of fun. Mm. Um, but I think with the way that um, Expeditions Rome is designed, and even with the fantasy of Rome specifically, where you're this, uh, you know, you are you are the Legatus eventually of an army. So the Legatus really be <clears throat> grinding up gold to buy items from a vendor like that doesn't really quite fit the fantasy as much too. So I think it also plays into that a little bit as well. Yeah. I think it's it's a bit funny. It's one of like item vendors is I don't know. I've never found them super interesting in games. Never played around with it a lot myself. Um, however, uh, I think everyone know that right now Diablo Two Resurrected is quite popular. And my favorite game of all time is Diablo Two. I haven't played the Resurrected, but in Diablo Two, what you would often do is that you go to this vendor and look for specific items that can be randomly generated to something great. There's often nothing there, and you will have to leave town and then come back for the for the inventory to actually be updated. So you are sometimes yeah. in, in streams, you just see players like run to vendor, run out into the wilds, vendor wilds. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's not really a funny game loop, but whenever they find something, they do find that to be really interesting. And then, I mean, they also have gambling on top of it and they don't have to care as much about like historical accuracy or anything that would seem more real because it's a, it's a old fantasy game, right? Um, yeah. It's a bit weird. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, you're 100 percent right, and it's it, it's it ties into that um, you know part of um, how we even like uh, um, are trying to create a game that I mean obviously there's things that you can do repetitively, but it's not Rome is designed to not be a grindy game. Like it's it, there's a lot of content. I think right now, and this may, may shock some people. I think the last QA run of the game was like 60 plus hours. It's a long, it's an epic RPG, but there's really not a lot of sitting there and playing content over and over again that you may find in other games. I think the crafting system and the item acquisition system had to tie into that. Mm-hmm. And um, well, let's move. Let's go back uh, a little bit more into the crafting stuff. We're, we're we're a little bit spread out, but I think like that's that's where that, that those systems need to enhance that experience. And and that was a decision to remove vendoring. Um, I also feel like you know we we um we've talked about trying to make these things uh these different systems integrated into the fantasy of Rome, even when it comes to you know how you loot things in the world or whatnot. You know, it's obvious that it's a bit different than Vikings. You know, in Vikings, you kind of played this chieftain role, uh, and in Rome, you play this legatus. Um, but we wanted to change, I guess, um, how you went about crafting. You're not going to sit there and craft yourself. I think in Rome, we do it a little bit differently. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in Viking, it made sense that you could actually, I believe, spec skill points into perks that made some of your companions into uh, craftsmen. And then you could visit a blacksmith and over like essentially with your companions craft these items yourself which makes sense when you're just a chieftain of a small uh homestead not too many people not too many much power um but still wanting some control over the equipment that you that you acquire in rome you're like your legatus you're controlling 4800 fighting men and then plus all the servants and the smiths and everything else that goes on in leaking camp right so it doesn't make sense that you have to spend any of your time hammering at an anvil and neither does it for your uh, Praetorian guards to su- do so. There'll be multiple smiths overseeing projects so that all the equipment stays uh, prepared for fighting for all of your fighting men and uh, probably also for your characters. Yeah. So and rule of the dwarf. I I, I agree with you actually that, that sometimes crafting and itemization can end up feeling a little bit like playing a slot machine. I feel like you you may really like the approach in Rome because obviously every crafting and, and itemization system has a little bit of that randomness in there. It's part of what makes it attractive, but I think we've added a nice balancing act between the randomization, the excitement of that randomization, and how it's it's not really a stats play. We talked about that in the equipment dev diary, and you should go um, look at that one if you're interested in learning a, bit, a little bit more, but also in how we offer some more controls, which you'll see here in a little bit. Um, so let's give away our first key. I think uh, it's, it's about time. And uh, for those that are interested in getting a key, we're going to start with a, um, a dev stream question because you're watching... Dev stream. So um, the first question I have, I hope someone can get this right. I actually almost got this wrong earlier. So we'll see how many people have been on all the streams. If it's too hard, we have other ones in the background. But the first question is going to be, um, who can name all of the Logic Artist developers who have been on Dev stream? Four of them. Uh, one giveaway is Hans, which, by the way, uh, Fred Wary says Hans a handsome. So now you have a new nickname. Now Hans a handsome. Um, I, like that. I was a bit, yeah. bit sad about the whole Fassi fan club thing. I'm like, I'm here all the time until like, God, oh, Fassi. Uh, but hands to hands, I'll take that. So we had Hans. Um, there are three other people that we've had on uh, on this stream. I'm curious if anyone can name all all four. That's one maybe too hard. I'm not sure if anyone will. 
because I actually missed one during uh, our prep. So uh, I'll give it a few minutes and see if anyone gets it. And if not, we'll ask a different question. I actually think right now people are probably going to YouTube and trying to look through the list to see who the guests are to see if they can figure it out. So um, let's move on to the talking about the uh, um, the uh, the where we were in this thing. The um, so yeah, we talked about a little bit of this when you're when you're crafting an item. Um, the items don't come to you instantly. There is kind of a timer involved. That's right. Yeah. So um, with most tasks in Rome, uh, you'll have to like, time has to pass for things to actually uh, be, be crafted. Uh, for a multitude of reasons we don't need to talk about, but um, as you go to, to your smith and you have the list of stuff that you're able to craft, you'll be able to select X amount of things and queue those up so that they will be crafted over time. So you want a helmet, you want a shield, you want two spears, and then you want a body armor. It'll take X amount of time to craft different kinds of items. Uh, and as time passes, those will get finished and then put into a small um, chest container when you're standing by the blacksmith. And then the next time you come back to uh, to the blacksmith, we actually have some uh, some one-liners for like, if, if he sees you walking by, he'll be like, hey, Legados, we uh, we finished some of your crafting stuff. Come over here and pick oh, up, cool. uh, maybe queue up some new stuff. Awesome. I do think that question was too hard. Uh, someone guessed a couple people they know on the development team, but that wasn't it. So let's do an easier one. What city and country is Logic Artist based? That one should be. So... Uh, and if, hopefully you know it and don't Google it, but, uh, whoever gets the city and country, uh, that logic artist based in, um, you'll, we'll give you a, a Viking here. So, um, what determines what you can craft with them? So you have these slots that you can use to craft. In. How do you like, you can just craft whatever you want. Is there, <clears throat> oh, one proud Bavarian got it. He is right. Logic artist is based in Copenhagen, Denmark. So, uh, and, uh, beautiful city, by the way, a lot of bikes, a lot of bikes. A lot of bikes. That's I think that's what I know. For. So one proud Bavarian, please feel free to uh, reach out to Home Twenty Four and get your key. And uh, you can't get more than one, so uh, you got your key for the, the the day. And we will do another give giveaway in like uh, ten, so five or ten minutes. Congrats! I Great fear game. the Danish, but I fear not having a key even more. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, what 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 determines what you're allowed to craft? Well, um, once you unlock your armory, and this is a thing we'll talk about a bit later as well. Um, the smith, of course, already knows how to craft a various type of Roman equipment. That, that is the equipment that he equips all of your legionaries with and all your soldiers in your legion. So you can already craft a bunch of basic Roman stuff, um, your gladius, your scudum, your Lord Gahamada, and all those things that you commonly know. But then in order to be able to craft stuff uh, apart from that, You'll have to well play the game and go explore, go do looting quests, etc. Uh, other ways of acquiring items that are not equipable. And in there, you'll find items which we call schematics. And these are essentially patterns that tell the smith how to craft these items. You find these, and then you essentially learn them. And when you then come back to your smithy, uh, he will also have a one line and be like, "Hey, uh, Legatus, I got the schematics which you you found on your ways." Um, come have a look at what new stuff you found, and then upon opening the armory, you will see that um, maybe you learned how to craft a uh, Egyptian helmet, and you'll be able to go into the crafting uh, menu and then actually queue up those items as well. Yeah, and I think that's it's, it's a you know there's there's a little bit of that um, reward loop tied in like the exploration and progression where you're getting these different uh, uh, techniques. I think we call them in the game um, that allow you to craft the different uh, items. And I, I actually, um, I, we didn't mention this in the diary, but it's also part, like, the art team and the design team, too, but, like, we've spent some time making some unique items that really fit the the locations of the different places that you journey to. Like you said, the Egyptian gear or the Greek gear. Like, you have these different um, uh, kind of, like, styles, and, and I think that really helps kind of feel like, oh, I've, I'm here and I'm learning how to do these things from hmm. people, and it kind of reflects the itemization, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so you get really you know, weird like some visual progression there. <clears throat> So um, you get this, uh, this this technique, which allows you to uh, unlock, I guess, like a recipe. Um, and then, of course, it's kind of an obvious question, but I'm guessing then there's there's crafting materials that you need that you actually use, and you acquire those through gameplay, right? Yeah. So there'll be the three types of, like, the most common. Uh, it's almost like money, but spent for crafting on it. It's, like, salvage, essentially. 
uh, whenever okay. you find an item that you might not uh, need right now or don't find yourself needing in the future either, you can like hold your right mouse click button on that item and then it will be dismantled. Uh, and when dismantled, it um, will roll a range of like basic salvage that you need. And then it's also possible for it to uh, drop some like better salvage and then the best salvage. And the higher quality uh, and tier of that item to uh, important words uh, in the game, which we talked about in the previous dev diary, the higher the amount of those uh, salvages will be dropped for you. Uh, yeah, and this is a really cool, um, a really cool aspect because you have like a couple of different things happening here. Obviously, you get materials when you're exploring, so that's part, when you're playing the game and you complete quests. I think some, but mostly when you're like looting a chest or looting a body, you'll get you know equipment, you'll get some crafting materials, maybe you'll get some salvage. But there's not like we mentioned before, there's no vendor in the game, so you're not selling your old equipment. So if you want to get rid of something, the dismantling system is a big key. And there are even like, I, I think, um, like uh, keystones that are uh, keystones, but like key items that you get from dismantling that you need to make another of its type, right? Like I think there's um, like a sword blade or hilt for a sword or things like that. So there's kind of a loop there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it makes sense that you need specific type of like a, a sword blade to, to craft a sword or like a, a armor plate to craft a, a heavy armor. Um, that is not ring mail, but is actually plate armor. And that whole idea was that you should be excited to to find plate mail if you're in the need of plate mail, even though you exactly. might be, not be able to use that item. Like maybe it roll, it's a one base plate. It, it's not anything that you want to equip right now, but you can dismantle it. That will give you the, the keystone, as you call it, or the, the armor plate. And then you can go to your Legion uh, armory and then craft one for yourself. And, and there are the the keyword, as you also mentioned earlier, being control. Now you have something which you use to craft an armor that you're much more likely to be able to use. Yeah, I I personally really, so I, I mean, I've played a lot of role-playing games. I'm actually playing, um, well, different kind of role-playing game, but I'm playing Tales of Asteria right now. and loving it, by the way. Anyone who's a fan of JRPGs, Tales is a great game. Really enjoying it a lot. Um, but the, uh, um, I don't, I always have a problem with, um, I don't say problem, it's a strong word, but uh, when you're just getting vendor trash and having to just sell it and sell it and sell it for currency, that never really feels very good. And I, I I like, there's other games that have these kind of features, but I like when you get something that you don't need to use, there's another acquisition mechanic around it that it gets you excited. Like, oh, I got this vendor trash equivalent that's basically just an armor piece that I can't use, mm -hmm. but I can dismantle it and now I'm gathering those keystone items that I need, plus the salvage, which is kind of like a currency, but you're, you're really gathering those kind of materials that you need. And that just feels more, it feels like the reward is better. When you find something in the world, it's not just, oh crap, I don't need this. It's, oh, I don't need this right now, but I can turn this into something that I can use later. I, I like, it always feels better to me. I think that's, it's a more, um, uh, a more fun reward loop uh, for yeah. you know, kind of this I mean, one could argue that, well, you could just sell the window trash and use that to buy something else. But then either you sit with the situation I explained earlier where you have very specific items yeah. in the shop and then they're just good. And was it really that fun to acquire it then? Or you have to then go back and forth and like keep randomizing the equipment and then buy something which isn't a fun gameplay loop either. Ensuring that you get something which you could then use for a process that you're in control of with an outcome that you're more in control of should be more satisfying for and that yeah, that's the and, thing and, and rule in the dwarf asks a question. So you're not able to loot, create, or buy parts only via salvage. Um, it's a balance, right? So you don't buy them because there's no vendors to buy things from, but you do get things from looting. So you will get um, uh, things that you need for crafting from looting, both from bodies as well as from chests. Mm -hmm. um, so there's you also can get them from as rewards. Like there are world events, or, or not world events, but um, like world map events that pop up, and you may discover something that you need. You may discover something in the world map that has um, items. So you do get some from exploration and from rewarding um, through encounters. Uh, but then yeah. you also can get it from salvage. And there are um, specific things that you do get from um, uh, uh, salvage, especially when it comes to the more rare items um, that you really need. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah, cool. yeah, you yeah, can also send your Legion, I believe. Uh, like we have plenty of different things you can do with your Legion on the world map uh, when you're passing time. And one of them is like, for example, to send and uh, acquire salvage from towns in the in the local sector. So there's plenty of ways of uh, acquiring salvage. Um, something I actually don't think we talked about, which I, I think is a bit interesting since we're talking about not having vendors, 
we do in fact have vendors, but we don't have item vendors as in equipment. That's no way of right, buying right, body right. armors, but there are actually specific uh, vendors hidden like different places in, in, in cities that will let you buy um, some of these keystones that we talked about. And then also uh, equivalent items for tactical items, um, which is also a huge part of the crafting system. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's do another uh, uh, Vikings, Expeditions Vikings key giveaway. We're going to ask a uh, Rome question now. So a question about uh, Rome. This is going to be an easy one too, uh, but it's a... Uh, if, if you know Rome and you're a fan of of, of, of Roman uh, uh, culture and history and society, you're probably going to get this pretty easily. So everyone get ready. The question is, is what's the title of the highest ranking seat or the most powerful person or position in the Roman Republic? So who is the, I guess, equivalent to president, I guess, in the U.S.? But I mean, who is the, the, main, the main person? Um, and a little hint, there's actually two of them um, at a time. Uh, but the highest ranking person in the Rome alt see two people answer something but that's from not the republic that would be from the empire era of Rome so this is the republic era so caesar is a uh, um the empire era after they converted from the republic so if you go back in an age oh see mars uh mars mars linas got it it's consul so consul is a is a leadership position that was passed uh, i think it was every, every 5 years 10 years? Yeah. Every five years, that would be an Every election. five years. Uh, of, yeah. Uh, I don't remember if it's one or both two new consuls. Both. And the consuls are the highest uh, seating of power within the Senate. Yeah. So, and the, the, the Senate would vote for a consul. There were two of them. Uh, it was always the first and second person. Uh, if you know your Roman history, actually, uh, Julius Caesar, before he was Caesar, um, actually was a consul for one period of time. And that was part of his kind of consolidation and rise of power. And there's a really cool... Um, uh, what's that channel again? I always forget the name of it. Historic, uh, um, uh, shoot, forgetting the name of that, that YouTube channel that I watch all the time. I have, I have it on my, yeah, Historica something. Uh, I'm forgetting, I should have it written down so I can name drop it. But they have a really cool video on, um, how the consoles work and even talking about how Caesar grabbed his power. So, um, uh, Marzanos, please feel free to message Home24 and, uh, get your free key and, uh, enjoy Vikings. And we'll ask another question here in a little bit. So, <laughs> Tamsi LP says this is harder than my school's history exam. <laughs> We've actually talked about consuls quite a bit on the stream because when you start the game, Lucullus, who is actually a consul in Roman history, is the consul that you get introduced to in the very beginning of the game, and he becomes kind of your um, your sponsor. Your you know he's a big supporter of you throughout the beginning of the game. That's a a very big key moment in the um, in the in the storyline of you meeting him and. And kind of getting to know him during the experience. So, Great so project. I do want to um, uh, before we go into the, the the kind of special crafting stuff. There's another question that came up. Um, I think Rule and the Dwarf is the one that asked it, but um, and we said we're going to answer it later on. But now is uh, the kind of time to talk about it, which is um, a lot of people kind of think about crafted items being the best in the game. Um, but we kind of crafted items kind of a certain slot in progression. So there's a couple of different ways. How how do we fit crafted items into the ecosystem? of the weapon or the item economy well so uh, it's a hard like question to answer way. yeah i mean essentially crafted items are meant to be possible of being the best item in the game and that's all with grabbing onto that control which i've mentioned multiple times because you can find really really good equipment um but with how our item system is set up you have item tiers which uh, like separates them in huge stat bumps and will feel like that big power grow. And then in qualities that makes them so that items can get more specialized uh, affixes on, on top of them. And then we have unique items in, in the end, which is like all of that culminating and have like a special, unique, almost magical thing on it. And one could easily think reading some of those special properties that they have on them, that those will be the best items of the game. And that's very often the case in, in other very loot-heavy games like the Diablo genre, which I'm a huge fan of. And while it's super cool to find some of those items finally that are super powerful, uh, in loot-heavy games like Diablo, it's random when you find it. So it's exciting yeah. to finally come upon that. Whereas, like, Rome is a very uh, story-heavy RPG, and specific unique items will always be in the same location throughout the game. Some are randomized, it's different how you can acquire them. 
But yeah, there'll be specific proper ones that you can get very specific times. And it'll feel bad to know that this is just always when you get the best item in the game. And then nothing else is interesting after that. So that's where crafting comes in uh, with a lot more control. Uh, and we'll talk a bit more later on on how you can take unique, unique items and then use the different crafting systems to essentially create your own unique items. And in that way, come upon the exact item that you need for your build. Because I think that's the whole, it's like, Items have different value to you depending on what kind of uh, item, like, uh, character combination you have or what character builds you're running. Yeah, I think it's a um, there is this 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 layering of these different systems as you progress because you are going to find a new thing. And if we go back to the again this, is this dev diary and dev stream, we talked about the tiers and the mm -hmm. quality and how those things kind of work together to do progression. And that definitely ties into the crafting system, um, even when it comes to um, like modifying a weapon to improve its tier, maybe, or um, um, how those those things kind of connect together. But it's a lot of back and forth, I think. And I actually was talking to our, our QA team about this a number of months ago. Like in the beginning of the game, most of what you get, almost all of it, is going to be looting, and you're you're finding you're basically kind of getting equipped in the beginning from yeah. your fallen uh, the fallen enemies, and then you start you unlock the armor. And you start experimenting with crafting and it becomes kind of a blend but you're gonna have these kind of hopscotches where it's like okay i'm using my most of my my equipment is looted but then i have a couple crafting schematics that i'm interested in and then i get to a point where maybe i want to get a whole row of crafting stuff but then i find a really cool unique item and so you have a lot of this back and forth interplay and there's a lot of decisions involved with that and i think uh, um it, it ties a lot into the way we've designed the combat system honest because weapons specifically like we talked about before, there are no white attacks, to use a phrase that you know is from MMOs. There's no white attacks, it's all ability driven. And the abilities come from your weapons primarily. So you may find a new weapon that has an ability you haven't seen before, and you may really like that crafted thing you got, but it's like, man, I kind of want to play with this new ability and see how it works because I want to try it. And so that creates a lot of experimentation incentive. Mm -hmm. And then when you get later on, you kind of learn the different things that you like, you may start crafting for a specific set of abilities and affixes and whatever to kind of get yeah. this neat combination that works. So you end up having a lot of this back. I mean, I'm a little biased, obviously, because I love Expeditions Realm a lot. Um, some people on the, on the THC Right marketing team uh, sometimes comment about how I seem to be like this like prophet of Rome because I just I love this game. But like it's, it's a very unique um, combination of how these things pull back and forth because you're always trying different things and finding different motivations. You don't really ever find the perfect equipment until you start getting really later on in the game and it's mm. not perfect because it's the most powerful it's more perfect because it fits the kind of play style you're running with this particular build yeah. it's like oh i want and we talked about this before the archer i want the ability that connects with my character's class skill that then also is amplified by my affixes because this is the way that i'm using this particular character because I have this other character that's doing this. Other, there's a lot of this connection stuff, and that's where that Rube Goldberg machine thing kind of comes in. Where you're like, man, if I can get this guy to do this, and this guy to do this, and this guy to do this, then man, we're 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 now doing something. It's it's the crafting system really like pours kerosene on that. Like it allows a lot of neat enhancements to, as you're starting to play with it. It's 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 super cool. Yeah, I mean, it was going from Expeditions Viking to Expedition Rome. I was like, I feel like Viking was very very close at having a lot of these great. Things with items that I enjoy from a lot of other RPGs. Um, yeah. And I felt like we both needed to add depth and variety, but then that came in form of, okay, we also have like a huge game. You need to be able to find a lot of equipment and it can't keep, like, keep being new. So you need to be able to find the 10th Roman helmet, but randomize whatever it's on it. So you can compare it to whatever you had before and then grow that in certain ways um, so that you, through randomization, at some point sit there and wish that man if i could just find this perfect item i would be able to get a little more critical hit chance or just i would be able to have the same stats that i have on this great bow but with this skill that i haven't had since the beginning of the game that i'm just missing um and that's where crafting uh, both comes into the whole slot thing but also gives you the control to to fit into that build theorizing and and making your play style yeah, definitely. And I think that's even, so this, this connects good with the next thing we're going to talk about, which is like, there's, you have ways to craft items. When you craft them, there's a certain level of like randomness involved. 
but then you can also modify items as well. And there's kind of two ways that you modify them. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that and how we, how, like, when, after an item is crafted. And this still takes place at the armorer. So you're still yep. at the armorer. You're using the Praetorian that's that's boosting or, or improving that armorer's time frame. But what are these two ways that you can modify weapons after you've crafted them or if you've already acquired something? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> crafting items will, will take a certain amount of time to actually produce them. And then besides that, we have... Uh, those two other things that you mentioned, one of them being upgrading items to the next tier. And this is something we decided to include mainly because of how it, it sucks to have an item that you're really well connected to, especially if you craft it yourself. And then finding mm. that now it just gets like taken over by the power progression and you have to find something new. Um, for anyone playing on Insane, that can feel like it's out of your hands uh, for what power, like, if you can actually follow the power curve. And then for anyone who gets a tie, like tied to the item through having their unique build played around it or just finding it to be, be really cool because they found it with the story moment or maybe they chose to kill some character that was a really brutal thing to do but they got to keep their uh, body armor or something like that and then it feels like, really bad to have to throw it away. So through allowing you to upgrade items you can keep some of the items that you um, have gotten attached to. Uh, and it's a kind of an interesting thing because I mentioned in the previous uh, dev stream and dev diary that uh, higher tiers of items have new stat ranges. And then on top of that, weapons also have more weapon skills that they roll with. So say you uh, choose to upgrade your bow of Eurytus to tier 2, then it will keep all the great things that it already had on it. But all of its stat ranges will now increase, but re be re-rolled within that stat range. and. Maybe you get a low roll. It will, no matter what, um, we've ensured that those stat ranges are higher than the previous tier. So it's an upgrade. Like, you don't press upgrade and get a downgrade or nothing happens. It's an upgrade, but it's rolled within a new range of numbers now. And on top yeah. of that, it also adds a skill. And it might not add the skill that you had wished for. Um, so that adds, like, some randomization, but it allows you to keep that item as well. Yeah, I think we have a video. Uh, I don't know if we played the crafting video yet that I, we recorded, but there's a video that actually shows some of that in motion because you see, I, I think in the video, I go to the modify screen and the upgrade screen. I, I upgrade a random chess piece to tier three, I think, or tier two, um, and it gets those new those new values to it. So it, there's also the ability, I think, to um, yeah, I think we're doing it right here where you like can see the the the, the modify and affixes changes because you can also change the affixes on them as well. So you have an ability yes. to spend um resources based on some parameters that allow you to modify that too exactly so um as i yeah we also talked about earlier you can find these schematics in the world that allow you to craft specific items but you can also find schematics that allow you to modify ethics uh, certain affixes and some affixes we can like consider being better than others for example a cool one is um being able to resist fire so if you're shot with a fire arrow you will have an increased chance of just like not catching fire that's a really, really okay. powerful thing to have. Um, if you found that schematic, you're able to take specific items that allow that affix and change, for example, your increased max health stat on your body armor to have that burning resistance instead. And um, this is kind of like that extra layer of tool because if you upgrade your item, you get an extra affix or the affix like re-rolls, then that's a shame it didn't get exactly what you want. You have the modifying system on top of that to allow you to control what it gets at, at the cost of resources, of course, not time there, just resources. Yeah, and that's where it becomes a balancing act. You can't really do that to everything, so you have to kind of make the yeah. decisions on which ones that you're, you care about, which ones you don't. Um, one does not simply make a count, which is, that's a fun Twitter uh, Twitch name, uh, asks a random question I'm going to just grab right now. Will there be animal companions in the game? There's not animal companions in the way you're thinking about it, but there are some animal stuff that you may have fun with. So there's 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 some animals that wander around and uh I think that's enough in the game so we could say yes, but no, you don't bring animals into fights or to complete right, fights right. with you. <clears throat> but yes, you can have animal companions. Yeah. Um let's do another uh Vikings giveaway. Uh we have another question. This one may be hard, um though I think if people have been paying attention to some of our marketing in the streams, they may be able to get this right. Um, it's about the game, uh, about Rome, and, um, yeah, cats can, yes, there are cats, I actually think Jonas talked about the cats already, we definitely have cats in the game, 
Um, I know Jonas has a cat, right? I think Jonas is a big cat person. Jonas' parents has a cat, and then multiple people That's right. in, the, in the studio have cats, and there's like cats in the background of our Zoom meetings, and we have this whole dogs and cats things going on, and it seems like the cat people are more committed. We also have the, uh, the um, what do we call it, the, um, the uh, we're in Egypt, right? And so Egypt, the cat thing is a big deal there, too, so. Yeah, what a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tamsi, I'm sorry. I didn't mean the other ones weren't hard. Well, I mean, where Logic Artist is located, that's not too hard. Maybe it is. So, um, what are, this is for a, a, a Viking, uh, what are the three regions, aside from Rome, so aside from Rome itself, what are the three regions of the world that we've talked about that you get to play in Expeditions? We've actually mentioned two of them already during the stream. Three. Um, you don't have to get our names for them, you just have to kind of, kind of get where they are in the world, and I'll still kind of give it to you. Uh, but there's three places that we you get to play with in the game. I'll be uh, curious. Wow, Home has four cats. You have four cats, Home. Goodness gracious, that's a that's a lot of kittens. Let's see if anyone uh, can get this. I'm sure some people are going to scrub uh, the YouTube videos to see if they can pick. Uh... Maybe we'll make it easier for people, and we'll say two of the three. Let's see if they can get two of the. Oh shoot, Sir Falwick actually got it pretty. Much. I'll give that. To so he said Europe, North Africa, and that's really close. It's it's Gaul, which is a part of Europe. It's it's technically like kind of part of France, um, but yeah, it's it's Gaul, which is kind of uh, um, uh, France, uh, North Africa, which is uh, definitely true, and then Greece. Mm -hmm. So you got it. Yeah. So Sir yeah. Paul, congratulations. You got your uh, as a third key we've given away today. So you got your uh, your uh, expeditions Vikings key. Please feel free to message home twenty four. Yep. Cheers. We should have had like a. We should have had like a little animation. We didn't do that. We'll do that for our next uh, our next giveaway. Yeah. Also, now Home Twenty Four is mentioning his cat name. So Home, our, our our lovely community manager, his cat names are Bumble, the Fat, Percy the Stubborn, Hank the Oil Slick. That sounds like a story, man. Uh, and Tigger the Slappy. No. I love all of them have like these like uh, like suffixes after. Not just Bumble, Bumble the Fat. I'm guessing Bumble likes. To uh, that's the funny. Uh, if you write me those names, I'll see if um, maybe I can convince Jonas to to get those cat names into the game somehow. Who knows? We we you know we should run a contest to get like uh, cat names into the game. Like uh, submit your cat. Like uh, you gotta put him in some kind of cool like green screen roam background or something. I don't know. Uh, right, so Bumble the fat. A good way we could put it into the game. <laughs> we should we get we well we should limit it. We should give it to any animal, any pet. Um, we find a way to like show off your pet. Maybe we can. Uh, do a contest. Maybe it's a good thing for next stream. I don't know. This is, this is an idea. See, you come to the streams, you may influence things that we do in the future. I like this. We should do a contest or something that allows people to submit cat stuff and uh, our, our, our animal stuff, and we can get yeah. the, the name as a pet um, a game. Animal stuff. Let's not, like, favoritize cats any further. I think uh, we're doing that plenty. I mean, I'm a, I'm a bunny person myself, so hardcore bunny person. Bunny, yeah. bunny rabbits all the way. Uh, all right, so enough distraction from chat. Um, back to talking about. Uh, see, what's funny is now we're talking about animals. Chat's like going off. It's, see, all you have to do is talk about animals. Chat loves it. Part of the thing. So, I um, you remember if you can craft any animals in the game. I don't think so. Uh, we, I probably came up in a brainstorm, but I'm pretty sure you can. So we, we talked about like um, uh, the the way that you can kind of modify weapons. Um, that have the, uh, the, the, you know, like the, you maybe want to like customize their affixes or customize their, their, uh, their stats or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But there's another thing that's a little bit more, uh, deep that is, it's a unique thing, which is we have these, these items that are unique weapons. They're special. Yeah. I think they show up as orange, uh, in the UI. Um, yeah. they're usually named. I think we mentioned one of them in a previous stream. Like there was the, the dagger in Egypt, I think, which is a famous. The dagger of Tutankhamun. Yeah. That's a, yes, yes, it's, it's a cool experience in the game. It's a great way to great item actually. And um, yeah, those, those items, unique items, as we call them specifically all have what we call a special property and special properties are like mystical, almost magical charms or something that at least at like an extra attribute that you won't be able to find on uh, any other item. And, those are really cool. They enable a lot of builds. They help you in a lot of unexpected ways. And they kind of add that, like, even an extra layer of, of customization into your character builds. And so what we wanted to do, um, and kind of hinted at before, 
would be not only being able to upgrade items and modify items, you can also imbue, is what we call it, this special property of the unique item onto other items that you've found or crafted. Um, and the way that we go about that is that we, we don't want the player to run around with uh, daggers on all characters that all have the same like magical or fantastic uh, attributes of the Tutankhamun dagger. So that one is unique. It can only ever exist on, on one item. Um, so how we decide to do that is build that into how the dismantling system works. And when you dismantle any unique item, it will both give you a schematic that allows you to recraft it in the armory. And the reason for this is that it might be that you need, like it doesn't have the exact affixes you want, it doesn't have the exact skills you want, you want to be able to craft it again so that it can get to the exact item that you want it to be. Or you can use that unique material and in the case of Tutankhamun's dagger, I believe it's like a meteorite blade, which is actually a a historical artifact we got inspired, uh, inspired by uh, at the real world. So if you find this meteorite blade and craft Tutankhamun's dagger, um, then suddenly you'll learn about its special property. You dismantle the dagger again, and now you're able to put like use that meteorite blade which you get from dismantling to imbue another item with a special property of Tutankhamun's dagger. So maybe you have like a Greek assassin dagger of some sort or a Roman Pukio. It has everything you want on it, the affixes, the skills, the stats, the, the roles that you like spend your time on getting and now you want to put the special property of the Tutor Camus dagger on top of that, your own dagger will turn into a unique item and it will get this thing on top of it. And that allows you to really specialize uh, this item. And that will be the case where crafted items are the best in the game. If you craft yeah. them right. Yeah, I think it's a it, both of those things you talk about are really cool because it allows you to kind of like journey a unique item through the game if you want to keep mm -hmm. it with you and you can keep that visual because a lot of the unique items, especially the armors, have some yeah. really cool visual. Um, and they're, they're unique. You find one of them, they're special. I think I have one on the screen right now, one of the stabs, but there's a um, there's like there's some personality to it, which is really neat. And if you want to bring that with you, you can, but if you want to take its unique properties and bring it to something else, you can mm -hmm. too. So that allows, it allows you different options based on. Um, I mean, I, I personally love looking badass in games, so I like those really cool visuals. But some people have like specific other items they get attached to, and they may want to make them have different effects. It gives you some of that that power to do it. Um, I also find like it, 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 there, there's there's kind of this like um, hidden special content around because some of the, these like unique items or like the unique schematics that you can find, these special, they're like they're almost like hidden quests. You end up like finding them through talking to people and discovering them, and they have really powerful abilities later on in the game that you find. So there's, it's like this uh, almost like hidden level of content that you're exploring. Yeah, I think we hinted at it in the dev stream about side quests, how we have specific content that we, we consider quests. Like the, the way that you go about experiencing in the game is very much like a quest, but it's not something that goes into your quest journal. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Might, for example, stumble upon a broken wagon somewhere in goal that has a unique item and your characters go, wow, well, look at this, like, crafting mission like look at this piece of a pike uh hilt it has like engravings it's super cool it looks like it's made of silver let's bring this by the blacksmith and see what he has to hear and this will like open up extra uh dialogue options and essentially send you on this like journey to know how can you actually spend this unique material because you don't have the schematic that's the thing you need the schematic and you need the material yeah. you only find one of them and you need to figure out how to acquire the other and that becomes a small possibly quest in its own uh, even though it's not, it doesn't have any quest markers. It doesn't have any oh. uh, like journal log telling you what to do now. I, I geek out on stuff like that because I think it's 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 fun because it happens so organically. You're just like wandering through the world, and like you said, you discover this random silver hilt of something, and you're like, I want. And, and there's dialogue that kind of makes it immersive. So like, I don't know what mm. this is. It looks really ornate. We should go ask Homeboy about it and see what he has to say. And then you talk to him, and he's like, "All oh, this, I've heard of something like this before." And then you have this whole like discovery thing where you may be hunting for this thing and trying to find it while you're also progressing through the game and if you end up completing it and getting all the different pieces and you get this special thing i think it's a very rpg-ish kind of thing that i personally love I, I get really excited about that stuff because it just mm. feels like the world comes to life and it's fun finding the powerful stuff like you have i don't know for me i, I like um 
the normal progressive curves of like loot grinding and finding the different items you go. But I also like that world based immersive stuff too, because mm. uh, it's I don't know, it's just cool. It adds it adds depth. And, um, a lot of them are unique visuals and unique properties. And I know right now, because I I, I know the what people are working on, you're actually working on some of the unique weapons uh, later this week and doing yeah. some setup for them to make them even better. So like, there's a lot of synergies between the skills and these unique aspects. So yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's, it's one of the things we definitely had the most fun implementing in the game because it yeah, just kind of like it was fun for us to go. We have this list of items we want to create. Some of them, sometimes it's really nice to just easily you kill a character, you get his sword, it's super good. That's a nice experience. But the more yep. varied experiences we can give you, um, the better we, we find the game to be. So uh, we kind of looked at the entire. You want to run around with like two summons dagger, right? Yeah, like that's just kind of a flashy little bling bling, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's that's a whole different level of. Sh I wish, like, if you're running around with that equip, like, someone in the world would be like, "Dude, where did you get that thing? From? Like, what are you doing with <laughs> Tutankhamun's dagger?" Like, yeah, that's it's cool. Uh, and there might be something like that in the game. Maybe not commenting on very specific items, but we definitely had uh, have stuff borderline up because the Romans they um, they have, they're flashy. I mean. They're what Roman? Oh. They're flashy. I mean, I don't know about in 2021. I I don't. I shouldn't uh, say anything about that. Uh, my fiance is actually in Rome right now, enjoying herself uh, on a vacation. Um, uh, okay. Back back Republic times. Uh, silks, nice togas, colors, gold. Yeah, they. I think um, they weren't shy of uh, of equipping themselves with some glorious stuff. Yep. Yep. Well, let's do uh, another Vikings key giveaway, um, and then we're going to answer some questions. So um, this one, if people were here in the beginning of the stream, they may remember the answer to this. Um, if people weren't in the beginning of the stream, but you know games, you may be able to figure it out. This one's a little bit hard, but uh, I know if I, if I say it's a little hard, Tempsey's going to be like, they're all hard. What do you mean? Also, Tempsey asked me if I, or Tamps, Tampsy LP, I may be pronouncing as if I ever did the bunny challenge. I actually don't know what the bunny challenge is. So, no, I don't think I did. Um, so, uh, question number five. Uh, oh, number five on my list. Um, we talked about this in the beginning of the diary. Um, and uh, beginning of the, in, uh, in the beginning of our stream. What are the three most common ways to acquire equipment uh, used in RPGs? Like, what are the three categories or are ways that you can often acquire equipment in RPGs. We talked about this at the very beginning of the stream, or you could probably just open up the diary at mini.expeditionseries.com. I think it's in like the second paragraph or third paragraph. People want to try to rush and cheat it. Um, oh, see? Tamsi had it ready to go. See, that wasn't that hard. Tamsi got it. That's right. Um, looting, crafting, and purchasing from vendors. That's exactly correct. Actually, uh, Ruin the Drew got, got it true. Um, so, and K21 Hunter, uh, quest fighting and crafting is pretty close. But, uh, yeah, Tamsi LP, you are the winner. We should have gotten some kind of Roman rivalry popping out of my head. Uh, so really feel like free to message Home24 and get your Vikings key. We're going to give one more away. I don't have a, a last question, so we'll have to either do our last question or we'll find some other way to give the last one. Let me answer a few questions from the stream, and if you have any questions that well, you haven't asked, put them in the chat, and we're going to just do questions time here for a second. So um, the first one, I think we answered this uh, as we went, but I'll, I'll take it anyways. Uh, Sir Falwick asks, will there be material vendor NPCs for crafting and will we be able to get a variety of materials from different vendors? Yes, I think I touched uh, briefly on that uh, previously as well, but we'll have uh, various different vendors. The, the one common thing that they have is there's no buying items, as in equipable items from any vendors. You won't be able to there's very specific hidden cases maybe um talk to the vendors they'll have cool stuff they generally won't sell you any swords or, or armors but they'll sell you sword plates they'll sell you bow strings they'll sell you armor plates some of them will sell you linen that you need for bandages some of them will sell yeah, exactly. you um medicine and we we put a good info effort into making all these vendors um make the world fit more yeah, I think there's a couple of them, right? Like, there's a I know there's a, a merchant that shows up in your war camp, but I think there's also a couple that you see in a few maps. Like, I think you run into a few map vendors that you can talk to as well. Yeah, um, the, uh, so the Legion has 
the Legion has its own market, and those are actually two different systems. We have, we have a market where you spend one resource to, to trade for another. So uh, if you're in a sector in Greece, for example, that has an abundance of medicine, uh, but they're in really big need of um, slaves or money or something else that is a resource in, in Rome, you can yeah. exchange those. Uh, and then you have other vendors, smaller vendors that you find in different towns throughout the entire game that will sell you more specific this, things. Yeah, and this kind of answers Rule in the Dwarf's question too that I'll go ahead and grab too, which he, uh, he or she uh, asks, uh, so you are not able to loot, create, or buy parts only via salvage, which there are some parts that are specific to salvaging, mm. um, but there are going to be vendors or other ways that you can loot and find things. It's not just um, via the salvage system we talked about before, for sure. Yeah. Um, there was one question that one proud Bavarian just asked now that I think is a really good one. Um, and I like this question. It's like, um, how do the devs view the upcoming game compared to their previous title? Uh, what do you take from Vikings into Rome? I'll say first off, before I turn that over to Hans, Rome is is enormous compared to <laughs> Like, in a scale of magnitude, uh, I think even bigger than we originally had planned it when we increased the scope of the t game, it, it, it got... It got uh, big. There's a lot of stuff in Rome. The story is is quite extensive. These crafting and looting systems are big. We have a whole bunch of different... We have the sieges we haven't talked about yet. We have pacification quests, which we've leaned into a little bit. We have all the story encounters. I mean, the game is... is it goes across the three regions plus Rome, and you visit Rome three times. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's it's a... It's a it's a it's a it's a fun game. It's a little you will you will get a lot of your money's worth with Rome. Let me tell you that it's fun. Yeah. It's a big game. I, I would think uh, it's a good idea to watch the first step stream with it and read the first diary because we talk a lot about how Viking you're yeah the chieftain of a small homestead and you're you're going from a raiding party with like twelve people. Um, so the game is much more like even though you're both in Denmark and in uh, like in uh, in Britain seeing it quite a lot of the world then it's it's on a small scale it's much more survival it's much more like intimate in that sense where it's rome we're trying to keep it as many as the the things that work really well in viking but bringing them up to this other fantasy because you're a legatus you're a patrician of a noble family in rome uh and you're commanding a bunch of like legions and, and campaigns around europe and those two things are quite different and We've like changed as many of the uh, systems and core pillars of expeditions that we had in Viking and Conquistador to fit with that in Expedition Rome. Yeah, yeah, I feel like um, the uh, another thing that it's really important to call out is that you know this is the third game that's really kind of progressed the combat systems that uh, Logic Artists has been mastering over their their time, and uh, even when we've talked a lot about the um, the the combat system in Viking and how we've modified it in Rome. Um, I think a lot of the learnings have evolved and carried over. So there's a, there's a ton of things that... I mean, Vikings is a lot of fun. The turn-based combat in Vikings is a lot of fun. Um, I know Jonas and I and Hans have talked a lot about some of the challenges that Vikings uh, provided when it comes to... Uh, it gets a little repetitive, or there's like some, some like uh, um, uh, loops that you kind of fall into. And we even, I think in the beginning of Rome's combat development, we had some of those problems even, and we were seeing them evolve. And we're like, well, wait, we had this in, Ro in Vikings too. How do we, how do we bend these? How do we break these? So there's a lot of different uh, mechanics in it that you can play with. And I feel like, I mean, in my, in my opinion, that that experience, I think you had to have gone through the previous games to be able to do that. Now it's it's something that you learn by trying and doing over multiple titles. And um, I think you're going to see that evolution really come out. And when you play Rome's Combat, it's it's there's more. I don't want to say maturity, it's just, well, maybe you call it maturity, it's just, we've learned a lot. Like, the team has learned a lot going through all these iterations. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that it's not uh, anything new to say that the Expedition Series Combat is very inspired by Dungeons & Dragons. That's where Jonas Verge got a lot of the inspiration from. And Dungeons & Dragons is by no sense modern. Uh, it's a very old game, it's been modernized and, and with different editions over this year, but it's all based in a very old game. And we wanted to keep as much of that as possible because we don't want to be something that's something not expeditions. Um, but this game, uh, I would say, is is a lot more um, modern in having tried a, a bunch of different things to essentially uh, break out of those habits and and things that um, could turn out really fun in Viking, but like dragged out the game in a lot of cases. Yeah. Uh, I want to give another key away. We didn't ask. We didn't write enough questions. We gotta find a way to give away the last. 
What do you think, Han? What do you want to do here? I don't want a random dice roll. Hmm. No. And it can't just be a ratio of hands. That that doesn't work. Yeah. We should have see I had I had enough questions um to have one extra, but then the first question was uh was a little bit too difficult. So uh we should have had one more to go. How about um what are some Vikings trivia? Uh, give the key to the last person to say something. That doesn't work. I mean, it uh, would be cool if we have any. I guess you need to have played the game for expeditions uh, for Viking, but it was like the the Viking homestead, your your hometown in Viking. It's a specific name of a city that we also still have in Denmark. It would be cool. If oh man, I don't even know. I don't even know the name of that. <clears throat> um, well, let's uh, let's do this. Um, we'll do a random one. We've, all, we've been asking a lot of questions, and a lot of this has been, like, knowledge-based. Mm -hmm. So let's do one random one. I am going to, uh, I'll, I'll give it one minute. I'm gonna think of it, I'm gonna write it down uh, on my handy bay notebook. I'm gonna think of it, I'm gonna number right now between 1 and 50. And, uh, we'll let some people put in numbers in the chat, and whoever gets closest. That way we have one that's not based on knowledge or skill. Uh, oh, Brad's favorite baseball team, that's an easy one if anyone pays attention to the previous stream. Um... So we'll do it. We'll do a number one just for fun. One through fifty. Throw your numbers in chat. We'll give it this last minute, and I'll pick uh, whoever gets close. Let's make it the first number that you write down as well, so there's no multiple entries. Yeah, yeah. So anyone want a Viking key? Put a number in chat, and uh, we'll see. Uh, someone pick thirty-three. All right, we got one, two, K. Okay. It'd be great if someone actually nailed it. Mm -hmm. What did you write? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give them until uh, one minute. I'm gonna give one minute tick over the uh, who gets closest, or until people stop posting. All right. Right now, I see who the winner is. Uh oh. Someone's pretty close. What if multiple multiple people hit it? Because the first someone's a uh, five away. Yeah, I love someone picked home 24 because uh, 24 is home's uh, 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 second number. That would have been. <laughs> it's the number of games the Braves get kicked out of the NLD. Oh, come on. Man. Last night was a tough loss. That was the NLCS, but yeah. All right, we're going to call it. Uh, the number was 29. So that would make one does not simply make a count the winner with 24. So congratulations. Uh, one does not simply make a count. Please feel free to message home 24 and get your Vikings key. Um, for those who haven't played Vikings, uh, super encourage you to check it out. It's a lot of fun. So it's an older game. It's been around for a little while, but I think you'll really enjoy it. And um, for those who have joined us here today, my humble appreciation. I hope you had a lot of fun. Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, 33 would have uh, would have won, actually. 33 would have been one uh, one closer, uh, but 24 got it. So, um, yeah, a lot of fun today. I hope you guys enjoyed the Viking Key. We're going to do more of these key giveaways. I think we're going to try to figure out something about this 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 pet name thing. I'll I'll give it some uh, um, some consideration. We'll find a way to do that. And uh, we hope you had a lot of fun with the stream. Uh, again, you can join us on our community site, community.expeditionseries.com have uh um our poster dev diaries there and when questions are asked there we always try to grab them from the game uh, we're gonna be here so we're gonna start doing these a little bit more frequently very soon um so i uh, hope you're gonna get excited for november and seeing a little bit more of us and um uh feel free to get plugged into our discord we have facebook we have twitter so we have all the posts on there about upcoming streams and everything um hans it's been fun being twinsies with you for today it was good well, we could do it another time as well i think we're, we're a good team yeah, yeah, we'll do the. We can do the other shirts, the black shirts now. Okay. And um, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, wait, slow down. I have to link this stuff. Oh, <laughs> poor home is like, oh, help! My cut pace isn't fast enough. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next time. Have a great day. Cheers. Thank you guys. Take care.